Welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to work with particles in Unity 3D. Particles can be found in the Game Object menu under Create Other uh, Particle System. Uh, by default we start getting, you know, little white dots flying up and around, which is uh, great if we want white dots flying up and around. Particle systems have a transform just like any other game object. We can move and rotate them. Uh, scaling doesn't do anything, however. I'm just going to walk you through all the uh, different settings we have here in the particle system. So you can see there's a lot of parameters. Uh, first of all, you can change whether or not it loops. Looping will uh, play it for the duration and then stop. Turning it back on will allow it to run indefinitely. You can change the lifetime of each particle, how long it lasts for. You can change the speed, how quickly they fly out or fly in. Um, start size. These are all just general options, so, so go nuts playing with them. None of them are terribly complex. Start color is very straightforward. Gravity modifier will actually allow your particles to be affected by gravity. They'll get uh, uniform acceleration downwards or upwards. We can also adjust the max particles. Max particles is, is the boss of all the particle spawning controls. It controls how many particles are actually allowed on screen at once which is, of course, very, very important for any kind of optimization. Emission changes the rate at which particles spawn, so a higher emission means more particles at once. See how it's uh, actually puffing out into different clouds and stopping here? It's because it's reaching the max particle limit. It has to wait for more particles to die before it can add more. We can change the shape of our emitter. In this case, uh, it defaults to a cone. We can change it to a sphere, which is just radiating outwards in all directions, or a cube, which, um, or a box rather, which will actually control the area at which it spawns from. Color over lifetime is a uh, a very cool, very useful setting here. Uh, by clicking on here it's similar to Photoshop's gradient editor. This top row that I'm playing with is the alpha, the, the transparency. So you can see as I turn down the, the end it starts fading off. I can add a keyframe in the middle just by clicking on the top there and change the left to transparent. I kind of have it fading in and fading out. The bottom row here is color, so I can actually have it change color over the lifetime of the particle as well. In this case I'm doing a, uh, a really crude fire effect uh, making it go from kind of yellow to white to red. You can also change the size over the lifetime. You can see at the bottom here there's a, a, a number of predefined curves for you to use. You can get small to big, or big to small in a linear curve, or using an exponential curve or a Bezier curve. You can also directly edit this curve yourself by clicking on it and moving around the, the points. You can double click to create new points as well and you can move the curves just like any other curve editor you've used. I'm going to play around with this, um, just, just kind of tweak the settings around, try to find a, a nice effect for the ship's exhaust, the ship's engine. There's a lot of other settings here, as you can see. There's velocity over lifetime, limit velocity over lifetime, force over lifetime, there's even collision settings where your uh, particles can bounce off of objects in your scene. I'm not showing those to you right now because really these are the, the core elements you need to make good particle effects before getting confused with the extra details. These, these tools that I've showed you just now are really all you need to, to know aside from bringing your own materials in for custom particles that aren't just this uh, soft circle we're using here. So we can attach the exhaust to the player just by dragging it uh, onto the player. 
making it a child of the player, just like the wings are. We'll need to reset the position, you can just zero out the, uh, the position here, and rotate it so it makes sense. Not perfect, but let's try it out. So you can see it's following the player ship, no problem. Uh, I think that's emitting way too slow. Um, the particles aren't really matching the rest of the scene, but let's uh, continue to play with that. You can also change the simulation space. Um, as you can see here, I just set it to world from local. Now as I move around, the particles are actually staying, persisting in space where they were. It's a cool effect. I don't think it really suits the spaceship right here, but um, very, very good for doing, you know, trailing effects, trailing particles. You can also edit these in real time. Like a lot of excellent Unity tools, the, uh, the inspector can be modified during playtime to see your results right away. So play with it, tweak it around, try to find something you like.